Hello, I'm Greg Gilles, the editor of Unquote, and I'm here on the last day of the IPM conference in Cannes today, and it is my pleasure to be joined by Nenad Marovat, the um, CEO and managing partner at DN Capital. Nenad, thank you very much for being with us today. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure. Not, not, a bad, bit, not a bad place to be in January. Absolutely. Uh, and I thought perhaps to start with, you could tell us a bit more about uh, DN Capital's history and what you guys do. Sure. So DN Capital is an early stage venture capital firm. Uh, we focus on marketplaces, fintech, software, and digital health. And we really have three main hubs, so London, uh, Berlin, and Silicon Valley. Okay. Excellent. And where do you see the most uh, interesting intr uh, opportunities in venture at the moment? Perhaps focusing a little bit more on Europe, but feel free to go into global. Sure. I think within Europe, uh, we're heavily focused on the UK and Germany. Okay. Um, those are the two markets we really, um, you know, we have dedicated teams. Um, and, and we've been very, we've been one of the early investors in Berlin. So we've managed to get into companies like Auto One, Quandu, um, home to go etc. And also, in, obviously, in the UK, which is our home market, uh, very lucky to invest in companies like Shazam, like Purple Bricks, etc. Okay, and what, what sort of trends uh, are you paying most attention to at the moment? What, so where do you see the most opportunities? Yeah, I think the trend right now is moving more towards software, uh, fintech, digital health. We obviously are very strong investors in marketplaces, but I think that you know, e-commerce and marketplace is probably taking a slower position to these other new areas. Okay, okay. And um, obviously, you're not the only ones paying attention to that to, to that space. Uh, there's been a lot of success stories from from the fundraising side to you know the rise of, of European unicorns, and, and some observers point to a bit of a European venture renaissance and, and and LPs you know taking notice of that. Does that does that tie in with what you see? And, and you absolutely. Think? So I think if you look back to 2005, we had one unicorn in Europe. And I think the number now today is over 60. And these are companies worth over a billion dollars. So I think Europe has emerged tremendously in the last 10 years. Uh, last year was the best year ever. We had Spotify go public at 30 billion. We had Adgen go public at 15 billion. We had Farfetch also 8 billion. And then that's on the back of um, uh, Just Eat, Delivery Hero, Zalando, et cetera. So I think Europe is, 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 is definitely a very significant um, player in the European venture capital market. Yeah. And uh, obviously a, a bit of a hot market as well. There's a bit of competition between VCs and a lot of opportunity. How do, how do you stand out in the market? What, what key uh, characteristics do you think a good VC should have to take advantage? Well, I think you know, we, we're very focused on our sectors. We, we, uh, we do a lot of analysis on our markets. So we know our markets quite well. We know a lot of the entrepreneurs that operate in these markets and also we're you know, we, we really focus. So we're not, we're not everywhere, but where we, where we focus are sort of London, Paris, Berlin, and the Nordics, uh, we're quite deeply in, you know, rooted with the entrepreneurial um, communities. Okay, and uh, one last parting question perhaps. Greatest challenge for uh, 2019 and key expectation for 2019? Well, I think the biggest challenge we all have for 2019 is uh, what happens with uh, Brexit and the EU and, and all this, which is completely out of yours and my control. But I think uh, this, is, this is obviously a concern for me. I think that I'm very, very much a pro-European and I'd love to see, make sure that all these borders uh, don't start popping up and making it difficult. Because one of the beauties today in Europe is you can basically get an engineering team out of, out of Romania or Hungary or whatever and, and put it together with a you know, uh, operational team in Germany and the sales team out of the UK. And I think that's great. And I hope that you know, the politicians and us as business practitioners work closely together to make sure that we have this level playing field because I think competing against the US and Asia in a f from smaller fragmented countries is much more difficult. So I think staying together, working together is the key priority for, for Europe for the next uh, future. And on the, on the perhaps slightly more positive side, any sort of uh, key exciting development that you're looking forward to in, in the next few months? Yeah, I mean, you know, our portfolios are, are growing tremendously. Uh, companies like Auto One and Home to Go uh, just, you know, hitting numbers that we've never seen before. So we're very positive about the prospects for European companies on a global basis, not just in a European perspective, but on a global basis. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Nenad. Pleasure having you with us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. Thanks and for thank having me. And thank you for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.